Hi, everyone. It is really interesting to talk about latest development in e-learning or use of computers and internet to enhance learning. Right? So it's kind of mobile learning as well. Or some people call it blended learning. So whatever it is, or what we do is, we will be using a computer. We will jump onto Google or YouTube, and then we will be searching information for a topic, and then we will be reading that information to find out whether it answers our question, right? So I was interested in finding the latest development in e-learning or education technology usage. So what I did over the last one and a half years, I have carried out my research, particularly in state schools in Auckland, to understand what's happening. Now, I found that most of the time, the, what students are doing is I, they are doing research on internet. They use their devices. Junior classes, it's called buy your own device, right? B Y O D. So they have a laptop. Or some schools, they don't have. The schools are providing some notebooks for students, right? To use and then return. But however, whatever it is, use of internet was there. The students do research on internet or YouTube and they look at information and they continue with what they're supposed to do. Now I ask myself that's what I did in the 20th century. That's I'm talking 98, 99. But this is 21st century. So I don't see that much of a development from that after two decades. But there was a little difference. It was the use of Google as a learning management system. So it's a Google platform, right? And then the students are expected to use Google tools, Google calendar. So it's all about Google. So then I asked myself, you know, is Google tools, can, is that the latest e-learning driver? So that was the question. But then the other thing is, I found that learning to learn is the new chick in the city, or you can call it new dude, or the new bandwagon, right? So everyone is getting onto that learning to learn bandwagon. In fact, there is an Australian organization by carrying out research in New Zealand as well. Do you see how year nine and 10 students can perform with learning to learning? So year nine and year 10 are the target group. Now I ask myself, learning to learn is about thinking of our own thinking. That is called metacognition. It's a big term. It should not be taken lightly. So in my case, I remember when I was submitting an assignment for education technology here in Auckland in the 1998-99, there was one subject. It is called use of technology, uh, use of multimedia in education. So I selected the topic um, HTML because what, what I felt was HTML can combine the text, the video, the audio, graphics, animation. So that's a whole lot of multimedia together. Now to do my, uh, to complete my assignment, I needed to get help from my instructor and I found my instructor did not know. All what I was told was, talk to somebody and ask, collaborate, and that's it. Talk to somebody, ask collaboration. There was no one to guide me on how to do that. So I was desperate, but there was a time limit. Within three months, I had to complete the assignment. I had absolutely no choice. What I found was I did research on Google to find out how to write in HTML, you know, a series of lessons. And I got hold of a couple of websites. So I read and I followed the instructions, right? And I worked midnight sometimes for five hours at a stretch midnight without sleeping even to make sure that it worked. It was very painful. And you won't believe that. I had no choice because I had to do it. If not, I, was, I would be failing that the subject. That's not what I want. Now remember that. In that case, I had 
an excellent concentration. My, I had the ability to concentrate. And then I had the ability to read. That is, I'm calling critical reading, not just passive reading. Passive reading meaning you can read under a tree and you can sleep. That's not active. So I read actively. I carried out. That means I learned by doing this code. I wrote it. And I save in the computer, I test that, and I found one by one working. But at times, it was really, really frustration. Now, with that in mind, I thought of now, doing something for this learning to learning. If not, people, a lot of people are talking about learning to learning, and there should be someone to walk the talk. So I see this series as, uh, yes, it is learning to learning. But it is walk the talk series would be a better way of interpreting that. So with learning to learning, you can call it self-directed learning, right? So self-realization. In other words, you are digging yourself. You know, some of the topics you have to think deeper and deeper to understand what did I know and what am I going to know? So it's kind of self-excavation. So it's a tough one, right? So on all of these things to coming together, and then we need to be looking at the future. Why is that? Because the future jobs aren't created even, right? So the doctor, you know, those, the, the jobs that go by the book, the doctor, the lawyer, the engineer, they have to go by the book, right? But all the jobs are not going by the book. You have to have this creativity, or you call it out of the box thinking, your original thinking. How would you get there? That's where you need to get the getting to this learning to learn bandwagon. And then you need to focus on the thinking part. That is the part neglected here. How am I going to monitor my thinking? Or how could I visualize my thinking? And that is deeper. So what I'm going to do is, in this series, I'm going to strip out little by little, you know, a number of topics. Because one topic is reasoning. Reasoning is such important when it comes to learning. You know what? If there is somewhere it says, all swans are black. What does that mean? That if all the swans in this world are black, but somewhere, somehow, if someone find a white one, that statement is wrong. That reasoning is wrong. So you have to think what material you read. Are you reading? Am I reading a reliable material? Can I you know, can I uh, find something better than this one? Uh, do you, uh, how can I find the latest information? Uh, who is writing this? Is it a blog? Sometimes you know the information coming from blogs are not that reliable. So it is necessary, we need to find reliable information. So that means not from anyone's website, you see? So number of areas we need to address, right? So I hope you are going to enjoy that. So let me take you step by step this series and then to, to help you to stand on your own feet. All right, there's a new chick in the town. Or you can call it a new dude in the city. What's that? The learning to learning bandwagon. Right? Let's see what are the things in this bandwagon for us to consider. If you get a subject or a topic to learn, you will find objectives. So you'll be thinking of what those objectives are. Right? Here you are. Then what would you do? There are so many things will come to your head. There. What do you call those? They are your thoughts. What's the next stage? We need to see how the brain is working. How, where is it going to the brain? How is it? What part of the brain affected? That's the hunch. Right? Here we are. There are three parts of the brain. The one is the most important, all are important. Number one is the cognitive thinking brain. Number two, the emotional, or you call it the relational brain. The number three is the action brain for sensory and motor neurons. 
don't worry about these big words. Then what I'm going to do is, you can see that oval on the uh, cognitive part, the thinking brain. I'm going to enlarge that to get a better idea, right? Here it is. You see the right globe is the creative thinking, the left globe is the critical thinking. You can read those things, right? And if you look at the critical thinking part, you see analytical reasoning and logical reasoning. So those are important for mathematics and mathematics sciences, technology subjects, computing, all the areas you need it. Not only that, creative arts or across all the subjects. Uh, rather than some special, some certain subjects. Okay, so certain subjects you don't need that much of a critical thinking skills. Now, when you look at analytical and logical reasoning, that will be addressed in a separate video because it's a whole broad area, right? I can't uh, simply tell something and get away with it. I have to dig this deeper. So the next stage is what you have achieved so far we call it metacognition that is thinking about your thinking these are the elements you are going to expand further right this is simply the introduction and finally you are going to see whether you have achieved the objectives set that's your reflection so that's to get an idea of major elements these, all these pictures were taken from Google. Now this is cognition versus metacognition for you to get an idea. It's a mental process, cognition. Metacognition is again, a, a higher order cognitive process. Okay, again, getting higher. So you can see those differences leisurely. Now what I want is to find out what's exactly the meaning of cognition and metacognition. Let's look at cognition first. You can see the number of skills involved. All of these are coming from Bloom's taxonomy. If you type Bloom's taxonomy on Google search, you will get details of the meanings of these words. Also, you can look at my critical reading video that I use that Bloom's taxonomy. Another video is critical writing. And most importantly, the online LLN model, LLN stands for language, literacy, and numeracy. Literacy is directly connected to the uh, Bloom's taxonomy. I have addressed there, right? So this online learning model, the LLN model is really important. In fact, it is it towards L2L or learning to learning side because I was focusing on the employable skills even at that point. So this is, I'm talking some three years back. So three years back, I was preparing myself for the future of learning, right? And today here, a lot of people are talking about that, but I was one of the early people, the pioneers of talking about this topic and setting the background. So please access my videos and you will get more details. Let's look into metacognition. That is information processing further. What you thought in under the cognition is full enough processing further. So imagine the depth of thinking now, applying knowledge, changing preferences a number of times. Now, let's look at the learning methods during the latter part of the 20th century. I mean, what I mean is 1998, uh, 99, that area. I, I remember that I also studied that point. So research, you know, even in schools I taught. So resources were given, the websites, and students jump onto Google or YouTube. And then from there, they copy, rephrase, or paraphrase, changing that you know, original diagram kind of things. And then they would end up with a PowerPoint presentation, a written task, post, setting a poster or a drawing or some kind of a group-based project, okay, based on research. So finally, what it, they, they done was the work was submitted. That's it. And I have seen the same thing over and over after 20 years during one and a half years of recent experience, I did not understand what's going on, okay? But this is why I need to recall that 20th century, 1998, 98, nine. From there up to 2018, after two decades, where should we be if 
we are looking at learning to learning. Okay, so to do that, you're going back and see, it's happening the same thing over and over. Now we'll, we wanted to look at the, the brain. The brain is important in thinking. So what, what part of the brain is important? So to do that, I'm going to look at, you know, the messages are going through nerves to the brain. And brain, let me get a portion of brain and enlarge. And here you will find a number of islands here and kind of a, a cobweb kind of, right? Let's get one little island and enlarge. And you find, here it is. My goodness, massive. So it has the star-shaped, you know, branching pattern on one side and then the long stick coming out, ending with another little branch, but no leaves, right? We don't need to know the parts. So we'll get a couple of two cells and see how they are connected. These are two cells, right? They're called neurons, nerve cells, just two cells. Look at this, uh, the long stick-like structure, we call it an axon. And then look at the left side, the branching tree, that's the dendrites. And you see the two um, nerve cells are connected through a bridge, with a you know, bridge with many, many connections. We call those synapses. One is synapse, plural is synapses. Now brain can find over 100 trillion synapses. So that's a big number. These are just to get an idea. So I don't know whether you know that each cubic inch, cubic inches, the, the area is length is one inch, width is one inch, and the height is one inch. So that little portion, you know, one of your brain has about 16,000 kilometers of accents, you know, the length of accents just in one cubic inch. If you look at all neurons in your brain and connect them all together, right? You could send the nerve impulses to the moon and back. That simply shows the length. So imagine, if you don't think, right? How could you improve your memory, your think power of thinking, right? So this is the question. If you keep talking and talking and talking, your brain would not improve its functions. This is something for you to look at. Now let's look at the bridge. This is the bridge. Across the bridge, how the messages are passed through is, we call it neurotransmission, right? And the chemicals involved are called neurotransmitter molecules. You don't need to know the details, but you need to have an idea. So the whole thing is getting to you to tell you, you need to think to develop your thinking. If you keep talking without thinking, well, you don't find these neurons in your mouth. If your mouth is surrounded by cells, there are some nerves, nerves would have it, but not the cells that gives you the voice or the around your mouth. So just be aware of that. Now, this learning to learn is about developing metacognitive skills, self-directed learning, future skills, or future employability, okay? Now, the questions you need to think are, what am I going to learn by myself? We call it self-directed learning. Abbreviation is SDL. Another question, why should I spend time on self-directed learning? Is there an easy way out? Are there any shortcuts? Can you go to the shops and buy some thinking packets and then come home, dissolve in water and drink? There is no such thing, sorry. What if I could not learn what I want? Well, if you could not learn what you want, then you change the method of learning. That's what it is. How could I become a self-directed learner? So these are separate videos. All those information cannot be given in one video. Do I need some guidance? Yes, you will need. Who would help me? I'll give you the technique. Then how can I help myself learn something new? That's we all of you are learning. I remember calling some, talking to some students and they said that they have learned how to cook you know, certain food by looking at recipes from YouTube. And some students said they learned how to dance, right? So like that, some, some students said they learned how to rep uh, repair a digital camera. So that means everybody is learning by themselves. So the same thing applies here. 
you are learning by yourself a number of subjects you can learn the only extension is doing a practical in a laboratory you need someone because it is because of safety reasons other than that many subjects 95% of the content in a lot of subjects can be learned by yourself believe me because because i taught sciences i taught mathematics i taught business subjects i taught computing subjects without having a degree in history and geography i taught history geography couple of classes just to give it a shot and see how far i could go so it's all because of the learning to learning ability that oh in other words the meta cognitivity right so i have transferable employable skills now why it is important because we are in the digital age 21st century things are changing right then the next one is you are in the driving seat because you are taking charge of your own learning you are the driver of learning so it will increase your self confidence right and because of that your intellectual performance will be higher and another reason is you can control the experience you can decide what time you want to learn where you want to learn right you are take when you learn something you can say i learned this by myself that is having ownership then the future jobs they are not known these are evolving by the way some jobs like going by the book will stay but a lot of jobs are diminishing and new jobs are popping up so this is why you need to have transferable employable skills then increase self awareness you know who you are you know what you can do because you are thinking loud and you are sometimes challenging current learning methods by self questioning is this the only way i could learn what if i do the other way around what if i do this way why not i'm doing this thing how far can i go so you have to challenge yourself and that's so important right and continuing this uh the road style didactic learning that has happened some years back sometimes this is happening even nowadays in certain schools they are not this kind of learning is not resulting in transferable employable skills because when you go for an interview your boss you know whoever the interview panel will never ask you to read this paragraph and recall your memory and write it there is no such thing in today's world and the next importance is to cultivate or promote the most important thing the love of learning for learning sake if you had you shouldn't do this you, you you should change your attitude that's the only way right if you don't change your attitude it will be disastrous because you will have negativity of whatever you do so you need to tell yourself i'm smart i can do it and i should be positive and i love this the next one is of course you can increase your problem solving decision making look problem solving is not just in the classroom you take this problem solving this and decision making power to the to the life that you are going to lead you will find a partner or you will have to compromise and make decisions as a team in the future and number of decisions are to be made how would you do that you need to give give you 100% concentration to your brain and look at the brain thinking process and each decision you make look at the pros and cons right and then finally decide which choice would be the best so a lot of thinking involved and the other thing is to improve thinking about your own thinking if you don't think you will never ever improve your thinking so change your attitude and think about how you think then it will allow you to think differently that is critical or divergent yeah, that means out of the box thinking which needs reasoning reasoning is a huge topic i will get back to you with details in a separate video so that will help you to become independent thinkers then what you can do is you can identify gaps in your knowledge through self evaluation and self assessment so this is why it is important i hope you got the picture right so it's a it's a very broad topic in the learning to learn area it is worthwhile to focus on the roots of learning to learn landscape rather than the symptoms of the leaves because 
when you focus on roots, you will be touching all possible areas, although it takes longer period. But when you focus on center of the, of the leaves, then you will get quick fixes that would not last that longer. But we are looking at the future, future of learning. Why the future? Because it's an employable skills. And you, if you look at that, I have done a lot of work in this area, which is all under the learning to learn or the metacognition. If you look at my video on critical reading, that tells you what way you're supposed to read uh, when looking at the future of your learning, right? Metacognition. I have also um, uh, produced another video, which is um, uh, critical writing, right? How you write critically. So then the, the most important is the online uh, peeling the layers, that, that video that tells all of the areas that you, that someone needs to focus on. Okay, have a look. Let's see the parts of this learning to learn root landscape. So in the end, the very, very end is the deep digging down is the metacognition or thinking about thinking or visualizing your thoughts. And, you know, and also you can call critical and creative thinking. They all are there, right? That's the one should go deeper. Now you will find when you visualize what you have to do is you have to identify your topic, you have to do your research, you have to identify your bias, you know, favoring one side and favoring not other side, kind of based on your perception. And then inference. Inference is a big term because it has conclusions based on reasoning. So that is also you need to consider. Then relevance, right? Uh, how, how relevant your topic with, with the information collected. And curiosity, the hunch, the drive. Right, dig deeper and desire to find out more information. So that's all under the visual, how you visualize your thought. Again, I should get into details. Then, whenever you visualize your thought, you have to have a mind map. You know, what are the areas? What, in what sequence have I read? Have I understood? What are the branches? What are the areas I find gaps? Then reasoning comes all around. Mind mapping needing reasoning, inference need reasoning. So the overall reasoning is there. This is why I said reasoning takes a huge portion. Then you need to have critical reading. This is where my video comes in, remember? And LLN skills, that is language, literacy, and numeracy. This is what I have created. Online LLN skills, peeling the layers. Please have a look. It took me more than a year to think about that and to come up with. So they are not, you know, they're not very short-term gains, right? They take longer. That's what metacognitivity is. Then self-assessment is part of that. You are assessing whether you have achieved objectives against the given criteria, right? So criteria you need to read and understand. So self-realization, then once you complete your self-assessment, you know that deep down in your heart. I was quite closer to the topic. No, I have gone totally out of the way. So then you will realize that these are the areas I did not address, again, going back. So, you know, that is important. In the end, what happens is your performance. Intellectually, you can perform higher. And that's important. But not only that, your self-confidence will grow. So those are the roots. So it's worthwhile looking at the roots. Now, self-directed learning is, you need to ask these questions. Are you ready for this? Can you set learning goals? Can you engage in learning process? Can you self-evaluate? These are the questions for you to think about. Now, what I'm going to do is the Apple got products, you know, this iPad, right? Then iPhone, it's all starting from I, okay? Not the iron, or no, we don't call iron. That's, that's the odd one out. We have, those are all products, but here in my thinking, 
I got upper processes. My upper processes. You might be thinking, why is that? It's all I, right? Let's one by one. I decide. I meaning you tell yourself I decide, not myself, you, right? So say you tell yourself I decide, I control, I plan, I search, I think, I map or I sketch, I rethink, I reason, and the list continues. It's all about I. So I wrote on the right side the mouth bubble all the i words right i need a big innocence beautiful big i and here comes the i so that's all about i you tell yourself now there's something missing let's see what's the next one right so the love of learning for learning's sake is important if you think oh i hate this no you're not getting anywhere that's negativity right the words the richest and richest, healthiest, and happiest people are positive thinkers. Take it with a pinch of salt. So you need to have the love of learning. So when you say, I, I, I search, I research, I map, right? What all you need to do is you need to say, I love deciding, I love controlling, I love plan, I love drawing. I love searching, I love sketching. That's how you need to say. I love comparing, I love contrasting. Love is so much important here, right? So give them that fine, lovable touch. Now the checklist is this. You need to ask these questions from yourself. You know, if you cannot, um, if you're not familiar with critical reading, go back to my video, play it a number of times and pick up the important features. Before I publish my next one, you need to do all background work and get ready to learn if you want to be smart and if you want to become uh, one of the superstars in the future. Or whatever you do, if you want to win, or, the, the, this is what you need to do. You should be positive, you should put your 100% effort into that and you need to stand on your own feet. When I learned, no one gave me this guidance i was alone but i discovered by myself okay ask these questions can i concentrate my mind for at least five to ten minutes for a specific task this is to begin with okay can i read critically if not you know where to go in my video can i think critically that this is where we are heading now right can i think about my thinking that's metacognition can I write critically? If you cannot, you go, go to my the other video and look at that. Can I reason logically? This is a new dimension. I have to give a lot of information. Can I justify an action or event? That's a big task. Can I follow the steps of an experiment as noted in the book or the leaflet or the information where you got it? Then finally, do I have an inquiry mind? Inquiry mind meaning curious, inquisitive, seeking. You know? So that's called inquiry mind, right? So inquiry mind is very powerful. Now, metacognition in writing is, you can watch my the other video about critical writing. So that is writing assignments, right? Include, which has the note taking and recalling information. Also, metacognitive writing is high order thinking where writing is based on your analytical evaluation, creative thinking and thinking about thinking, right? Now, finally, I have a mind map of all the areas that's supposed to be there. So I thought about this and put them together. Let's see the parts of it. So learning to learn landscape. I've got this cognition versus metacognition. It's important. Cognition is thinking. Metacognition is thinking about your thinking. Right? So I put a star for that by the side. And I also noticed that practicing metacognition, how you think about your own thinking, that's important. And I can't ignore that. Now then the next series I have ordered, in, you know, kind of a sequence. So to start with objectives, what, whatever the topic you are going to learn, 
So you need to focus on the objectives of each lesson or each topic, right? breaking into portions. Or it could be reading or writing, right? So objectives, you know, you can read or you can write somewhere. That's what I meant. So the next thing is you are referring to sources. You know, what sources am I going to use? Maybe the textbooks, maybe internet, maybe magazines. Okay, so chunking different sections, you know, it's called chunk breaking into pieces then thirdly i thought that the mental activities what kind of mental activities would help you to accomplish a task yes one task at a time then i felt you need to have this critical reading or critical weaving critical weaving meaning not just looking at a video and you can you know staring at that you need to pause the video and keep a little note somewhere, either in the computer or getting a textbook a manually. That, that, because you need to analyze what you, what you were watching, what you were listening. Right? So it should be critical, not passive. Then thought next one, I thought critical thinking about what was read. Right? So what was read, done, or viewed that you, you know, watched. Then I thought next one is visualizing thought process. How do you do that? You have to draw some sketches or diagrams, so mind maps. You, know, you have to visualize by you know, paying attention to sequencing. And that's so important. This was completely neglected and I was surprised. It's so important to visualize your thought. Then, after a few days, what you do is you are examining by yourself the activities that, you know, the, the visual related to thought visualization, right? And then finding some gaps in between. So then you need to analyze and evaluate. Analysis, evaluate, remember I said it's going to Bloom's taxonomy, right? My videos would have the resources that I have been using. Then the next one is, to, you have to use different sources, or some different sources to fill the gaps that you identified in number seven. But there are gaps always. And then you're thinking the multidimensional thinking. That's a whole large concept here. Not one side, not two sided, many, many directions you have to think with reasoning, right? To check. check whether you reached objectives, that is number one. And that is the areas that we need to dig deeper. So be prepared to listen to my next video series, getting these things subject by subject, and I'm going through examples. With learning to learning, and you know that clearly there are six thinking levels, right? Level one, two, three are called the lower level and the level four, five, six are the upper level. So thinking is the cognition. So metacognition is thinking about thinking. So when you consider metacognition, the higher level thinking is something you can't avoid. That's where you are digging. So you dig into higher order thinking skills in Bloom's taxonomy, and not only that, you are thinking about those again. So that's how it reached to the metacognition. So, so don't think that oh, you can skip the higher order thinking skills and jump onto the learning to learn bandwagon and uh, you know browse the world. It doesn't happen, right? So therefore, these things you know it has to be told. And let's see how far you could go. But if you don't understand, you replay this video a number of times and clear all the areas one by one. If I use one word, and if you don't understand, you can post the video and type that uh, word on Google search box, what is the meaning of this word, and find out. And that's how you learn it, right? Step by step, you know, little at a time, not the whole junk. So when you eat little by little, you get the taste of it. But you need a lot of confidence. First, you need to believe in yourself, and that's important. The learning to learn tool coming in, remember that you have to let your brain to think, and not the mouth. So make sure the mouth is not going to think, right? So mouth is there to talk, to share views. 
true. But you have to spend more time on thinking about your thinking. And that's where exactly I'm going to dig into. Okay, I hope you will enjoy the series.